Hey guys, this is Nick and today we're taking a look at the Slimbook Executive. It's a 14 inch Ultrabook which has great design, great IO, great capabilities, but most importantly the best display I've ever seen in a laptop, period. So let's take a look at what it can do right after this word from our sponsor. So this video is sponsored by QMU Care. Basically, every sysadmin knows how to manually update QMU, but this generally involves shutting down your VMs, updating QMU, restarting everything, or migrating your VMs to another server while you're updating QMU. It's, it's a long and bothersome process. QMU Care lets you live patch these virtual machines, so you can make sure that they're as secure as possible without them going down. It lets you avoid doing complex migrations with your QMU or KVM machines while you're doing maintenance, as QMU itself will be live patched as your virtual machines are still running. You don't even need any specific maintenance window, because patching happens in the background, transparently, while your VM still operates normally. So if you want to see how that all works and get your free trial, click the link in the description below. So, Slimbook Executive. Let's start with the basic. So it's a 14 inch Ultrabook. It weighs one kilogram, it's extremely light, and it's made out of the same magnesium alloy that is used on the Slimbook Pro X line, which is very durable, very solid. It's really a good look. Like I've been using this alloy specifically on my Slimbook Pro X14 for a few months now. It has no dents, no scratches, no palm marks. It's basically very, very sturdy. Now the Slimbook Executive does exhibit a little bit more of deck flex than the Slimbook Pro X line, but it's really not something that you're going to notice in day-to-day -day use. When you're typing, using the touchpad, opening up the screen, you don't see it move or bend or creak or anything. It's, it's a sturdy one. Now the design reminds me of previous MacBooks when these things had ports. It's good. I can safely say now that Slimbook is out to troll me though. This is the state in which I received the laptop. They do know that I really love my stickers. Come on, Slimbook, you can do better than this. Bring it on. For the next one, I want to see even more of them. I dare you. Now, in terms of hardware, it comes with an Intel i7 CPU. It supports Wi-Fi 6 with an Intel AX200 chip, and it comes with plenty of I.O. On the right, you have USB-C plus Thunderbolt 4, a regular USB 3 port, an HDMI 2 port, and that barrel charger. On the left, you have a USB-C port with video out support, another regular USB 3.0 port, a full-size SD card reader, and a two-in-one headphone jack. Now, according to Slimbook's website, the laptop can also be charged through USB-C with a 90 plus watt charger that is unfortunately not included in the box. You only get the barrel charger. Now, the dual speakers aren't incredible, but they're serviceable. The kernel. You get your drivers when you update the kernel. You also get an OK microphone, which will definitely pick up on when you click on your touchpad, and a 720p basic laptop camera, which works with Slimbook Face, which lets you unlock your computer using your face. Now this combo of webcam and microphone will definitely not make people derail your online meetings with compliments about how you sound or look on camera. The model I got has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes of SSD, but you can get from 8 to 64 gigabytes of RAM and up to 4 terabytes of SSD. The good thing is, both USB-C ports can be used to drive external displays, which means that in combination with the HDMI port, you can drive up to three external displays, which is pretty cool. And you also can replace RAM and SSD by just unscrewing the bottom plate. It's super easy and it's a good touch. Now let's talk about that display. It's a 3K panel at 2880 by 1800 resolution. This is really high for a 14 inch device and Slimbook defaults to 150% fractional scaling. It has a 90 Hz refresh rate, which you can't downgrade to 60 Hz if you wanted to save battery life. I don't know if the panel doesn't support it, but you can't. This display gets bright at 400 nits and it has really good color accuracy and viewing angles. It's a stunning display, probably the best I ever used in a laptop, period. If you hate pixels, you won't see any here. They're here, they're lurking behind your screen, but you won't be able to tell. Apps that aren't built with native graphical toolkits don't adapt well to fractional scaling though, and for example, Steam is basically completely illegible on that thing. Now, for the keyboard and the touchpad. The keyboard is basically what I remember older MacBook keyboards to be, which is to say excellent, even though I've gotten used to larger keys nowadays. It has good sound, great tactile feel, 
the keys aren't mushy and bounce back quickly, and the key travel is fine for an Ultrabook. I think I still prefer the keyboards on the Slimbook Pro X line or the magnificent Opto mechanical keyboard on the Slimbook Titan, but this one is really good. Basically, it's at the same level of quality of what Apple used to produce before they went into the butterfly keyboards. It's really good. They should probably try and work on the Tux key though. For some reason, none of the super keys with the Tux logo on any of the laptops from Linux manufacturers that I've used really seem to work in terms of visuals. Like, I think we should be able to find something better than a cartoony drawing of our favorite penguin. We should be able to find something else, right? The touchpad is made out of glass and it's super large. It's super nice to use, especially with the out of the box inclusion of gestures in Slimbook OS. Now, let's talk about performance. The Slimbook Executive comes with Intel's 11th Gen Core i7 1165G7. It's a 4 core, 2.8 GHz CPU. On Geekbench 5, it gets 1638 in single core and 4453 in multi core with all performance tuned to the max thanks to Slimbook's inbuilt power control utilities. Compared to the Ryzen 7 4800H that I use on my Slimbook Pro X14, this CPU is a bit disappointing. Like, it does get 35% better single core performance. But on multi-core it's 45% lower, which is to be expected, as of course the Ryzen 7 is an 8-core CPU and this Intel CPU is 4-core only. In today's breaking news, random YouTuber discovers that double the cores equals double the multi-core score. So basically, where the Slimbook Pro X line will be suitable for people who want to do some graphical or multimedia heavy-duty work, the Slimbook Executive doesn't have the cores to do that. It's more tailored to users or professionals that need to do basic productivity things, like document writing, presentation, spreadsheets, email answering, stuff like that. Just your basics. Now, in terms of graphics, this laptop comes with Intel's XE graphics, which I never used on any laptop, and apparently they're a nice leap forward compared to Intel's UHD graphics, but I can't really tell I've been impressed with them in my use of this thing. Playing Hades or other smaller indie titles won't pose any problems, but in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1080p, at the lowest settings, FPS didn't go past 15. At 720p, it reached about 25 FPS at low settings, which is still basically unplayable. Now, gaming is definitely not this laptop's purpose. You will be able to play games that are not that graphically intensive, like for example Stellaris, before you reach the end of a campaign, or Hades, or smaller indie titles. But AAA titles, they are just out of the question. And that's disappointing, because the graphical part, for example, of the Ryzen 7 4800H can play Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 30 FPS at 1080p at the lowest settings. So yeah, Intel, still not good at graphics. Now as per battery life, the Slimbook Executive is quoted to be able to reach 12 hours at maximum, but in real world use, it's more around 6.5 to 7 hours when I did my testing with a YouTube video looping over Wi-Fi at mid-brightness with performance turned to a balanced setting. It's, it's good. It's good battery life. Now let's talk about the price. My review unit goes for 1,359 euros, thanks to a current discount of 100 euros. Now that's including our monstrous 20% value added tax that we have in France. The base model with 8GB of RAM and 250GB of SSD goes for 11.99 or 12.99 without the discount. So it's a more expensive laptop than the Slimbook Pro X14, basically 200 or 300 euros more if you take the discount into account. Basically the difference here is that the Slimbook Executive has a way better display than the 1080p panel on the Slimbook Pro X line, it has Thunderbolt 4 access and can be able to drive up to three external displays and it's basically not meant to do heavy-duty multimedia work. It doesn't have the core count for that. It's more meant as an ultrabook for people who need to have a small, lightweight device that's able to basically perform through the whole day and drive external displays when you get out of meetings and do your basic productivity. And for that, it is an excellent product that I can only recommend. Build quality is top-notch, screen is amazing, nothing to say here, it's a very good device. So that's it for this video review, 
In the interest of full disclosure, this channel is partnered with Slimbook, but they don't get any say in how I write my reviews, what I say about their products or their competitors' products. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't stay to like and subscribe or dislike and tell me why in the comments if you didn't like it. And if you want to follow me somewhere else, I'm also on Odyssey and you can also support me through Patreon or through my YouTube members. You'll get access to an exclusive weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!